Welcome to the Grief Bully Podcast. I am your host, Jay Nicole. Thank you for joining our weekly discussion around grief, mental health, and your overall personal wellness. The Grief Bully Podcast will serve as a vehicle to help you navigate life's journey. Be sure to subscribe, review, and share the podcast with anyone in your life that you think it will help. Let's bully grief together. What's up? What's up? What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to another episode of the Grief Bully Podcast. I am your host, Jay Nicole. Today is Monday, September the 7th. We are rocking and rolling back in the studio for another episode. We are here today, episode 56. Last week, last week, last week. Last week, we had a phenomenal, powerful, moving episode with our guest, Porter Rich from Camden, New Jersey. He came on. He's an artist, a rapper, a lyricist, an actor, co-host of a podcast, so many amazing things. He opened up his heart literally with us, and I think you should go and look at look at it. Check it out on YouTube. You can listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, as you guys know. Definitely subscribe, leave a comment, drop a review. Go follow Porta Rich, too, on social media at Porta, P-O-R-T-A, Rich, R-I-C-H, all together as one word, no spaces, underscores, or anything like that. So, this week we are going to get into our episode, but before we do so, we are going to thank our sponsors, BetterHelp. They are an online counseling organization. They offer counseling through text message, video calls. The convenience of that is you can do it through your home, at your home. You can do it at home while you're relaxing if you want to set up those appointments. Again, it's affordable, about $65 per week. They do not take insurance, but they do offer financial aid and when you use my link, trybetterhelp.com forward slash the grief bully, you will receive 10% off your first month. Again, that's trybetterhelp.com forward slash the grief bully. I definitely would recommend if you're having a tough time, anxiety, depression, there's so much that we're all going through right now that I think it would be super, super beneficial for you to check that out. If you have any questions about it, feel free to reach out, DM me. Hit me up and let me know. I will be happy, happy to advise you with that. So we are back in the episode. Excuse me, back in the studio for this episode is a solo round. I am here by myself. I do not have a guest today. And so I just want to dive into some conversations with you. I want to talk to you from some points in the Grief Bully Journal, which is a guided journal that I published end of last year, December 2019. And it has over 50 writing prompts, quotes, just was meant to really get you thinking, have you become more curious about your grief, look into it. Sometimes people say, okay, writing is a great coping mechanism, journal, but how, how do you do that? And so I thought by offering the writing prompts, asking certain questions, it would then allow you to navigate and move through your emotions a little bit better. So what I wanted to do today, I did this earlier on a few episodes, but I have gotten away from it was just personally answer some of the questions in in the journal, and hopefully my answers will help you along your journey. So the first question here that stuck out to me, and again, I don't really like to give things too much thought prior to doing them, and for some people that could seem irresponsible or lack of preparation, even for my, my podcast, I don't offer questions to my guests prior to the show is something that I just think for this topic, I want to have that raw response because again, I feel like there's too many sugar-coated answers to things, things that want to come off politically correct or the right thing to say, where I think with this is super important to give the unfiltered answer and response because through your genuine communication and expression, I think people are, are more likely to gravitate and to trust you and to feel comfortable with this subject. So one of the questions that I know I I never answered before from the journal is actually on page 15. If you do have the journal, if you want to answer the question maybe for yourself, is the thing that triggers you to cry the most is. And so with this question, I think it's, I think the answer will be a little bit multi-layered. And that's because The thing that triggers me to cry the most when it comes to, again, this is all specific to my grief and my loss, would have to depend on the time of year or if there's a milestone or something along there. But 
if I was just going to answer that off the top, I would definitely have to say maybe music. I would probably say music. I think music triggers me to cry the most in my grief. I think I have found that it's very interesting that R&B music, although I haven't had, my, my obviously my grandmother and my father, we are in like an intimate relationship romantically, but so many of the words and even just the melody and the vibe that it that it gets that it evokes gets me triggered there are so many times where tanya and i are in a car or i believe we were just actually eating and we were playing our playing our own music and i'm like uh oh, just can you can you change the song and sometimes I, I can't even really use all the words to explain why i want you to change the song she knows now but it's like if I continue to talk, explain it further, I'm going to just start crying. I'm going to completely just lose it. And that's those moments where I don't want to not lose it, if that makes sense, because I'm a big advocate for mourning and for the outward expression of grief, which is what mourning actually is. But I'm going to be honest with you, there are moments where I'm just not ready to do that. I'm not feeling like, okay, today was a great day. It was a good morning. I'm feeling good. Now I hear this song and I completely lose it. Sometimes I will allow it to happen because, again, I, I know that those moments won't mean necessarily that I will have a bad day in its entirety. But sometimes, let's be honest, you don't really want to fall apart or lose control. So I do believe a time and a place for, for everything, essentially. But music definitely is something that triggers me for sure. Also, how can I say this? I would say seeing other people with what I don't have. So seeing people with what I don't have definitely is a trigger for me. So for example, if I see someone with their grandmother or I see just an, el just an elderly African-American woman in public sometimes, it, it makes me feel a type of way. And yeah, I'm hating. I feel the hate. I'm hating. I'm throwing shade and all that stuff like that because it hurts. It reminds me. And so for me, a trigger is something that I don't know exactly 100% the definition. But for me, it's something that reminds me of a time, a place, or an experience that was once a part of my life that, that no longer is or something that is but was a very, very difficult time. Something that I don't necessarily like to experience or go through because I don't know that triggers necessarily have to be negative I'm sure things can trigger a positive emotion in you and a positive experience but when we're speaking here from the grief bully journal we're saying the things that trigger you to cry the most and so for me I have left shop right and went in the car and, and some tears came because I'm behind an elderly woman and she's using her coupons and reminds me of my grandmother and I feel certainly sad so that's definitely something else that triggers me to cry and then again just seeing people even for example my spouse Tanya and seeing her be able to interact with her father and I don't have that and so I have most certainly <laughs> cried so I think it's seeing what I don't have in addition to in addition to well, what did I say it was my first trigger oh my goodness uh, so seeing what I don't have is certainly a trigger and then also music sorry about that so hearing the music sets me there all the time. Any song, it doesn't have to specifically relate to that relationship, but it can definitely, definitely have me crying. And sometimes I, I will I will play it to cry. So when I feel like I need to cry, I'm like, you know what, whatever. I'm just going to lean into it and allow myself to have this moment. So yeah, so that was on page 15 of the Grief Bully Journal. I definitely encourage you to go check out that question, see what it is for you, because sometimes... Knowing what your triggers are allows you to be able to navigate and I don't want to say avoid, but better manage and, and maintain when you know that those things are going to come or to not put yourself in situations that are going to bring up those emotions if you're not in a place where you actually want to experience those emotions or go there. So I did want to get into another question here. What advice would you give a friend in your shoes? So I really like that question a lot, and I, and I like it for multiple reasons. I think one, I've found in my experiences that it is easier. This is prior. This is like circa before Grief Bully. I don't know what that would be considered. B, G, B? Yeah, before Grief Bully. 
before that that part of me existed, I think it's something where it's easier to give advice to someone else. It's easier to tell them what they should and shouldn't be doing and this is what you should do and I wouldn't do it this way and all those things. But when it's really on you to see how you would do it your way, it's a lot more difficult. But if I was giving advice to someone in my shoes, what that would mean is I would be giving advice to someone who has lost people in their immediate family, who has lost a close friend unexpectedly, who finds themselves have filling a pool on their heart to do more, to live with more purpose to shine their light every day and to give themselves. And so that's that if you were in my shoes, that's where you would be. I first would say, and you've heard me say this before, certainly be kind. You have to be kind to yourself. This is something, this meaning grief and deep sorrow and loss that we are dealing with, especially now, is something that really requires our patience. It really requires us to be kind to ourselves, to be gentle to ourselves, understand that the circumstances that you're in and that you're facing are not average. They're not average. And so 2020, as I've said before, especially if I'm giving that advice to someone right now, I'm definitely going to say you have to be patient and be kind to yourself. Realize where you are. I would tell you, too, that your grief is your own. It's totally yours. It's not to be compared to anyone else's. It's not to be, let me say, you shouldn't allow people to tell you how to handle it. To make, to make you feel bad, so don't allow people to grief shame you. Put your back up and, and fight back and tell, tell people that they don't have a right to say these things to you. I would encourage that person to find your voice, however that is. Sometimes we can't always communicate verbally, but we can absolutely use our voice in writing to write a letter to someone if you feel like you can't say to them exactly how you feel, then I definitely would encourage you to, to do that. To write a letter to express yourself, I think that's really important to do. I would also tell you, if you find that you you feel this purpose and you want to do so much and help so many people, I would encourage you to find boundaries. Understand that you have to be a priority. You have to be your first priority. And taking care of your mental wellness and your overall well, well-being means setting boundaries. So if you are going to have this passion and purpose and give yourself to the world and to your friends and your family and your loved ones, you have to take care of yourself as well. I have a quote that's like, be sure when you're shining your light on the world that your own backyard doesn't get too dim. And I think that's so important to remember on this journey. So if I'm looking at someone similar to Jay Nicole, I'm definitely saying that. I am echoing that to you. And I've had people, I've had a lot of people in the Blue Heart Gang, my community, who always say to me, hey, I, I hope you're taking care of yourself. I hope you're looking out for yourself. I hope you're taking time for yourself. And I let them know I do. I do. There's times where I have to just shut it all down, give myself that time, spend time with my family, and make sure that I'm okay, right? There's check on your strong friend. And sometimes you are your strong friend. You are the strong friend. So you need to check on yourself and say, hey, are you okay? I definitely would encourage that friend to journal, to communicate, to find an outlet, and make sure that they're getting those experiences out. And to believe that it that it will be okay. So those are some things that I definitely would encourage somebody and give advice to a friend or someone that was in my shoes, which I know it's easier said than done to do that, but that's something that I most certainly would do. So again, I wanted this episode to just be more of a short form. It's a one-on-one with me here with you all, just kind of voicing some things. I also know, like I said briefly a few minutes ago, that this is a tough time for us. We're losing a lot of people and and a lot of things. And I think one thing I I did want to mention, too, about grief that I want to say is we sometimes grieve things, excuse me, have a fear of the grief of a decision. So what I mean by this, and I just I don't know, I just felt led to speak about this because I have a lot of people that are going through things with relationships, marriages that are having tough times. There's so many things going on like that. And and also even with jobs and, and people who are trying to make certain switches in their lives and they feel apprehensive because of the preconceived, predetermined level of grief. So before making a decision, we say in our minds, all of these things, all of this deep sorrow, all of this pain, all of this agony, that's, that could potentially, right? Because there's not a guarantee. 
but what we assume is going to happen if we make X decision. So if I leave this person, this is the situation and this is how it's going to be. If I leave this job, this is how this is going to be. Or even if it's not the decision that you have to make, but being fearful of a decision that someone else might make. Hey, if this person breaks up with me or if this happens. And so sometimes we stick in things out of that fear of that grief, of that pain, of that loss. But in a lot of cases, on the other side, on the other side of that fear can be your most happy times, can be such joy such peace, such grace that you are missing out because of fear. That's something that I really felt it just dropped in my spirit to share that you have to realize and look at it and weigh the options, but weigh it with possibility for goodness. It doesn't always have to mean that, yes, there may be some pain, but you will be able to navigate that. But you can say, hey, this might be a tough time, but I know that on the other side of that could be good. The other thing is you might not even really feel so much pain because you could feel such such peace in that freedom from that bad relationship or from that job that you hate or whatever it is that you're being apprehensive about on the other side of it could be just what's meant for you, what's waiting for you, but we are blocking that because of our fear. And so you have to look at other situations. What I would encourage that person to do to help you to move you forward is to say, hey, when were other times in my life that look like this that I can now say, hey, I got through those. I can do this. Sometimes looking back, a lot of people say, oh, the past is the past. Leave the past where it's at. But sometimes it's like you need to look back because I know there's people out there who said that they couldn't live without this person in their past and their life would be over. Well, look at you living. Look at you. You're like five relationships past that one, you know? And so sometimes we have to look back and remind ourselves, okay, that was a, a somewhat dark time in my life, but I got through it and the, and the sun came out and, and the rainbow was in the clouds and these things happen. So I just want to encourage somebody. I don't know who it was for today, but I know it's for somebody. Somebody needed that advice. Somebody needed that extra nudge. And I'm not saying that things are going to just automatically be good if you make whatever decision, but I don't want you to not make a decision based on preconceived fear or sorrow or pain because pain, unfortunately, is a part of life. It also builds character, but you have to weigh the options. Do I stay in this misery because of potential more levels of misery or do I leave because either way, I'm not going to be happy potentially, right? Just speaking hypothetically, if you made this leap, whatever it is you need to do for you to better yourself because tomorrow's not promised and that's a whole nother subject. On the other side of that, you can say, well, either way could be bad, but this other circumstance, if I make this choice, if I leave this person, if I leave this job, whatever I do could also offer joy. Because if you've been in a relationship and you are you multiple times have had these situations and it hasn't changed, like pull the wool from over your eyes and see that this is the time for you to put yourself first, to prioritize and to realize if 2020 has taught us nothing else, it has definitely echoed and showed us wholeheartedly that tomorrow is not promised. Wholeheartedly. Chadwick Boseman just passed away. He was 43 years old, colon cancer, and he battled that for four years. So at the end of his 30s, this is what he's now facing. He didn't see that coming. People who didn't see 2020 coming like this, where family members are dropping like flies, where jobs are being lost and all of these things. So when there's so much uncertainty that we cannot control, do not continue to live your life in uncertainty that you can control. I I feel like I'm preaching. It's not even Sunday. Sunday was yesterday, but... We're going to just continue to move through this right here. I certainly want to thank you guys for tuning in for this episode. I I have so many. I was going to say our inspirational boost this week because I had the journal. I wanted to just use a quote from here, but I was going to say that I already use a couple of quotes. But our inspirational boost is a part of our show that I like to give a quote, something thought provoking, if you will. And that is brought to us by our sponsors, Adina J Designs. They make, create, and inspire us. They've got custom tumblers, doormats, fire t-shirts, so many amazing things going on. Follow them at Adina J Designs, A-D-E-N-A-J-A-Y-D-E-S-I-G-N-S. And make sure you tell them that I sent you. You might get a discount. I'm not sure, 
but closed mouths don't get fed, so let them know. This week, our quote is going to be, I wish grieving you came as easy as loving you did. I wish how hard I loved you kept you kept you here. And that is a quote by myself. I wish grieving you came as easy as loving you did. I wish how hard I loved you kept you here. And that actually vibes right well into what we ended the episode with today. Talking about that is that sometimes you love people and you love situations and you wish that your love was enough to make it work and to make the situation better. But sometimes it's just not. And we have to face that reality and, and begin to move forward. So I do want to go into our In Love and Memory segment, which is a part of our show that we take time to humanize and show love to those people that have gone on, that have passed away, and it's important for me. And so, again, I just want to continue to just show so much love to the lives that are being lost due to the pandemic, due to so many. There's been so many senseless acts of violence in so many cities, but more recently, I, I don't know the families personally, so I wouldn't feel as comfortable, I guess, saying their names. But there was two young ladies that I know, and one was from Camden, and one was in the city of Philadelphia. They were both pretty young, and they lost their lives recently. One was driving, and a gunshot wound to her head, and she ended up crashing her car and unfortunately did not survive that tragedy, just driving, and this is what happens. And then also there was a young lady who was a hit-and-run victim. And the person just hit her and kept going. And the second car hit her as well. That person did stop. But I know that if you do listen to this and you know those families and you know that I'm sending my love out, this week is so important that we that we recognize that. And it doesn't just become something that's another headline on a news article. It's super important. Those families now have to deal with something that a lot of people have experienced but never want other people to have to go through that as well. So that's my Love and Memory segment this week. Thank you. Thank you all for continuing to support Definitely, if you want to be a part of our Blue Heart Gang, which is a text message gang where you send a text message to me directly, we can talk one on one. Also, I send out content to you that I don't post on social media. It's exclusive information. When I'm going on live, when I'm going to be a guest on things, you'll know directly from that. So definitely send a text. Once you get the text, I'll lock you in and we can go from there and communicate if you have any questions for me as well. Also, I will be adding a part to the show where I'll be answering questions directly from my Blue Heart Gang. So if you send me a question, I'll answer it on the show. And that number is 856-341-9950. And I will put that in the show notes. Again, that's 856-341-9950. If you want to get a Blue Heart Gang dad hat, if you want to get a copy of the journal, a copy of my children's book, you can go to my website at jnicolejones.com. Again, everything is there for you. Links to everything that I'm affiliated with, you can find there at janacolejones.com. And guys, definitely please go to our YouTube channel and subscribe if you have not. We're going to be doing more with video content there. So I definitely want to encourage you to go subscribe, share, drop a comment. I love you guys. I love the podcast. Thank you for being so supportive. I truly appreciate it. You know where I hang out the most. I love, love, love Instagram, guys. Definitely please follow me there at i underscore am underscore j nicole guys till next time you already know love and light peace